evening and welcome to the Sound Off Show. My name is Linda Kirker. I'm the host of the program and I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'd like to start the program by reading a few quotes that I think are worth listening to and then I will introduce my guests. I have two guests tonight. The first uh, quote is this. I read this one last week, but I, I think it bears repeating. Fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. The next one is, socialism is the philosophy of failure, the creed of ignorance, and the gospel of envy. Its inherent virtue is the equal sharing of misery. Here's another quote. There is nothing that government can give you that it hasn't first taken from someone. And the last one, oh, next to the last one, a nation that forgets its past has no future. And the last one, there is no formula for getting rich, but there is a formula for staying poor by not working, not saving, and living on the promises of big <coughs> government. Okay, that is the intro, and now I would like to introduce my two guests. To my immediate left is David McWilliams, who has not been on with me before, I don't think. You've been on the program, but have you been on with me? Yeah, if I haven't, you know, we must be mannequins in a corner then. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Okay, well, it's been a long time. It's been and, a long time, you and know. And I'm old, so. Yeah, we're both old. <laughs> I had that, well, I had the big 80 last week, so. Yeah, I, I called you up and wished you I happy know, birthday. and I thank you so much. That was thoughtful of you. Yeah. No surprise there. <laughs> <laughs> and to my right is Don Tessier. Fairly regular on the show, although we haven't done it for a little while. Not together. We? I think the last time I was here was with David. Oh, without me. Yeah. 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 You, you, you were busy home. running the roads. You were, you were <laughs> busy at staying at home watching us and getting your blood <laughs> no, pressure No, I can't up. because I don't have cable. <laughs> <laughs> we're a fearsome threesome tonight. <laughs> okay. So what I'd like to do is ask each one of you, you can decide who's going to go first, um, either select a national or a statewide issue that's of great deal of importance to you or concern. And um, there are plenty of those to go around at both levels, uh, the state government as well as the federal. So uh, who would like to go first? Well, I can go first because I want to make sure you Republicans take and get your uh, heated <laughs> a little bit. Okay, get us heated up. <laughs> the first one is Medicare for All. Federal. Oh, dear. The, uh, and for the state, uh, the minimum wage uh, it should be a livable wage of $15 an hour. Those are the two subjects. Oh, you're trying to stir us up right from the <laughs> get-go. <laughs> All right, so you think, Dave, that everyone... You didn't ask him what he was going to have. No, we're starting with... We're okay. going to go back and forth. Okay. That's why you're on the left. <laughs> <laughs> My left, right. Um, so you think that everybody who starts a job with no experience... You know, brand new employees should start at $15 an hour. Well, first of all, I got to give you a little history of me because of the fact that I was, uh, my father was a union person. Uh -huh. My brother, Buddy McWilliams, was a union person. My brother, Gary McWilliams, was a union person. Oh, my. And I'm a union person. The only one that uh, has not a, been a union person is my younger brother. No He's kidding. He's a real estate agent. Well, there's got to be one smart person. <laughs> 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 smart. <laughs> no. Sorry so, about so that. So, anyway. I think in order for the people to live today as a livable wage of $15 an hour, if we put the wages up to $15 an hour, we also tell the people that are on social services that you're going to come uh, gonna come back to work because we're going to put you to work. If, and if you, uh, in order to receive your social services, in my opinion, I'm not running for office. I, you know, I ran the last time because I, I didn't want Lynn Dickinson to run on the polls. <laughs> so, but I also told her here on the show that uh, she probably would win. But, you know, we need to get people back to work. And on social services, you know, uh, we need to make sure that they get at least $15 an hour. We also got to get child care under control because it's way out of control. When you pay 170 to $200 a week per child 
because all the regulations, which is 27 pages, because my son's girlfriend runs a daycare, and it's crazy uh, the amount of uh, the rules that they have to follow. So if we bring the wages up to at least a livable wage, $15 an hour, get these people off on social service and back to work, and they got to take and put in at least $100 100 hours a week, then you know, then they they shouldn't be getting social services. Right? Okay, you said a hundred hours. Oh, hours hold on. per month. Oh, oh, we per have month. a okay. we have a caller, guys. Oh, okay, so <laughs> let's deal with the caller. Caller, welcome to the program. What are your thoughts? It's got to be Jimmy. Well, Fisher. I I got a question. I I cur- currently agree with a fifteen dollar an hour. I think that's absolutely necessary. Uh, maybe even more. Uh, but let's take, for example, the situation where you got got uh, high school students, 16, 17 years old. Uh, I think that that might be taxing the system a little too much. I agree that uh, it, we need to do that, something uh, to get, make a little wage. But I don't think that high school students living at home might, necessar- might not necessarily need to make, meet that wage. I agree. So what, what happens um, if you have someone who's been working at, a business for four years and they got up to $15 an hour over time. And then you have new employees coming in starting at that wage with no experience with the company. And so now the person who's been there for four years is going to, or any number of people are going to go to the employer and say, wait a minute, this person starting today is going to earn what I'm, I'm earning after four years here. You have to give me a hefty raise. And so what is the business owner going to do? Let's say it's a small business. Well, first of all, isn't the state of Vermont, because you're, you're involved with the Republican Party, aren't they putting that, uh, that $15 an hour over a period of years, like one or two years, that they want to bring it up to the $15 an hour? I don't know for sure. Yeah. But I know that it was talk about increasing it, you know, uh, over a period of one or two years, yeah. bring it up to the $15 an hour. I was hoping that the caller would want to respond to my question. I didn't mean ask, to... Ask him to call back. Put him off. You're welcome to call back, caller, if you have a comment you'd like to share in regard to the question I posed. Um, one or, vote for demo. Or something no else. For, uh, but <laughs> I, have always, I have always felt, and then we'll get to you, Don. I have always felt that I wanted to prove myself to the employer. And, and there has to be a decent starting wage. But I don't know if it needs to be the same for every type of work. But, you know, you can prove yourself. I, can, I can't say the company. <clears throat> I've worked for a company for a period of one year. Callers. The, the caller's back. Welcome back, caller. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think uh, you bring up a valid point there. Somebody who's worked at, a, at an establishment for, say, four or five or six years even, uh, making earn, you know, working their way up to the $15 an hour, then having somebody new come in at $15 an hour, I think that there may need to be some uh, legislature uh input there to uh, make that more equitable so that everybody across the board um, seems to be on, on a level playing field. Let me ask you a question, but first, could we turn up the volume for the caller, please? I'm, I'm hard of hearing, I guess. <laughs> uh, that goes along with my age. Um, so do you feel that government, see, there's the free enterprise system, Um, And then there's government interference in private business. And do you feel that government should have a role? If you're a business, are you a business owner by any chance? I am not currently a business owner. Okay. Um, But if you have been or if you can put yourself in that mindset, and would you like the government telling you how much you had to pay your employees? Well, I I think that uh, the world has come to that point because... Uh, it's just, you know, it's the way that the world has uh, uh, evolved now. And I think that, uh, to be fair to everybody, uh, that, you know, livable, livable wage is certainly something that everybody needs to have. And uh, I'm also in agreement for Medicare for all. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so what I think, uh, what, uh, you know, there, there, there's my own? Democratic... Uh, 
coming through. But uh, I, I definitely think that uh, you know everybody you know has uh, has a right to uh, health care and has a right to live uh, a decent lifestyle. Well, you know, um, there's one thing I ha- I've had two opportunities to speak to middle school students, and one of the things I mentioned to them was that. Um, the more the government does for you, the less control you have over your own life. And it's, it's very true. And I guess I'm an independent person who's always worked hard and I didn't want anybody, you know, uh, interfering in, in those kinds of things. But that's me. Uh, Understood. Did you, Understood. Did, did, did you want to say something to this gentleman, Tom? Well, I, I'm in favor of a livable wage, but we need to have it set up for incentives. You, get, we, you start here, and you come up as a pyramid as you improve your work. I mean, just offering somebody money without any testing or anything else, like this is what you come in and the incentive would be when you do this, this, and this, you get up there. You have to work your way to the top, like this is the way the United States was founded. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I agree, but I, I think that, uh, you know, initially, you know, just like getting getting back to the point where, you know, everybody should receive a certain amount uh, to the point where, you know, I think that it could be a graduated system, for example, where if you have, uh, again, you know, these these uh, teenagers in the, uh, who, who probably don't necessarily need $15 an hour. Yeah. I, I agree that people, uh, the kids working at McDonald's or those type of restaurants, but when a person graduates from high school, they they, they need at least fifteen dollars an hour. Any uh, student in high school should, you know, there's right now. I think there's a standard of wages that uh, they can pay them, you know, uh, in, in McDonald's and the restaurant. When I go to McDonald's, you know, right now I yeah, just about a, an hour ago, I paid over nine dollars for a chicken nugget. Right, a uh, water and a French fry. That, oh. I don't mind paying that as long as the employees are getting more per hour. I know a person that worked there that wasn't even getting fifteen dollars an hour; they're getting ten fifty an hour. I thought that I saw on a wall up there it's around twelve dollars, but but there's certain things up two. Yeah, up th- two. Yeah, there's certain things that McDonald does for their employees, like college tuition and things like that, that they're actually advertising. Apply for it. Uh, well, yes. I mean, yeah. you shouldn't have, I mean, you sh- if you can work, this is what the incentives are. You work your way up to get things that you want. For, man- for management and full-time employment. And- a meritorious system. Right. Yes. Right. Okay, well, thank you very much yeah. for your time. Oh, thanks, thanks for calling, for in. calling in. You're welcome. We- yeah. Appreciate right. it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this country is founded on that. To reward, if you work hard, you get rewarded. Right. But there should be a set of rules so that these people know that when they come in, you know, as long as I meet criteria one, two, and three, that I'm going to get up to fifteen dollars. Right yeah. now, there's nothing. You know, I've been. Wait a, a minute. It's implied. Huh? It's implied. If you prove, if you make yourself so valuable to your employer that he doesn't want to lose you or she doesn't want to lose you, they're going to pay you a decent wage. But you have to prove your value. Some employers don't. Uh-huh. Well, and then, I, you know, then want, they're going to lose out. And this and, person. And here's something I won't say on the show because I work for an employer. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, you know. Well, I got a question for you. There's, there's about, how many Democrats are running for president? <laughs> all right, 20 or 21. And all, most of them want to give every person in the United States $1,000. For what? That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, you know some The governor of the state of Vermont wants to give $7,500 to anybody that comes to Vermont and, <laughs> and, and starts their own business. I have a town slugman that wants to give them another fifteen hundred dollars if they'll come to St. Albans Town and and, and you know and uh, work at one of our factories. But you know some we got people leaving St. Albans Town. We got people leaving the state of Vermont. Give me ten thousand dollars, I'll stay here for another five years. Yeah. Well, you know <laughs> that's not the point I was trying to get at. Is they want they want health care for everybody, free college, and every person, and children as well, they're going to give them $1,000, I think it's a month or something like that. I, I haven't got my fingers on what it was, but I was re- hearing it on the TV, and I'm saying, where's all this money coming from? As most of those people, as you well know, are really on the left-hand side, and that's what the Democrats are now. Well, I have a friend that's a, a Republican, and you know him. 
and he has his own sports show. Last year, between premiums and health care costs, it cost him $30,000. He pays... For his, for his uh, employees? For him, for him and his wife, for health insurance. <clears throat> uh, the, the, I remember at one time, but I'm not sure of the price, that he was paying like nine fifty a month just for health insurance with high deductibles and high cold Is he in Vermont? Yeah. What's he it? lives on Jewett Avenue. Is, is he, <laughs> what's, his, what's his age? About 55. Oh, so he's not qualified for Social Security. That's right. Social Security. <clears throat> what is Social Security, Don? Huh? Medicare, right? No, no. It's yeah, something it, we work <laughs> for to get. That's all right. right. It's, uh, all the money my employers gave and I gave is now coming back to you. That's uh, right. All right, thousands of dollars. My wife just had an operation. Do you know what the opera- ho- a co- hospital cost was? I saw the bill. $44,000. Really? For a three-hour operation and a day and a half in the hospital. That is ridiculous. Medicare paid 17000 My other insurance, Aetna, paid 10000 Well, what, what, what has happened is... <clears throat> Out of control costs on health care and also on prescription. Well, that's true. Like, and, and the way it seems to work is that the, the higher the charge for the service. The more it costs, the more the insurances pay, even though they know they're not going to get that $44,000. The higher they make the cost, the more a percentage, perhaps, That's they right. get, okay? Yeah. I have an eye injection every two to three months, and what they're giving me, for the um, it's a $5,000 per injection, all right? How much do you pay out of pocket? Well, I I have two insurances that I that I up. have actually, yeah, I have two. I have Medicare, and then I have the supplement that I pay for. Yeah, same way with me. And it's not cheap. No, no, I you know I pay a lot in premiums between me and my wife just for my supplement. Yes, but the and then problem. Then I got my prescription. My prescription. Yes, plan. I do too. And you know, some you hit that donor hole, you'll find out awful fast what you pay eighty percent. Where you know, right now. I'll give you an idea. I take two medicine, Victosa, thirteen hundred and fifty bucks. I pay two fifty a month uh, for ninety day supply. I take Jordian. I never heard of those. <laughs> One hundred and forty dollars for every uh, every prescription. 90 days. Yeah. I said to my doctor, I said I can't afford that. I said I need a full time job here at your office because that's the only way I'm going to be able to afford it. <laughs> so you know now. I'm on, uh, because my sugar's a little bit out of whack, but not, uh, not way out of whack, is I'm on uh, Trunivia. Adverti- it's always advertised on TV. I <laughs> don't ro- watch those channels. <laughs> <laughs> you don't watch uh, 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 NBC, CBS? Not unless it's a, a show uh, that I like. So anyways, I go on Good IRX, which is a pharmacy where they give you the prices. Walmart. The cheapest for Junevia was two fifty. What do you think I got it for for ninety a ninety day supply? I went to the notch in Fairfax. I got it for twenty five dollars. Oh my goodness! You can't tell me there's not a markup on this medicine. People that are diabetics or on insulin, it's crazy what they're being charged. They're making a choice between whether they can afford the food or buy their medicine. And then what they're doing, because they can't afford uh, the medicine because it's so high, they're taking it like every other day, and where right. they should well, be taking it every somebody day. Somebody has to get after the pharmaceutical companies. It ain't gonna they're, happen. They're outrageous. The Republicans and Democrats ain't got any backbone. Well. Because they line everybody's pockets that's with right. money. Yeah. You got it. See? He, and yes, I don't agree I with agree. it very often. I agree with that. <laughs> and um, the other thing is that um, this Medicare for All is socialized medicine. It's government-controlled medic- uh, health care. And if you want to live like they do in uh, Europe, where they have government health care, they take 70% of your earnings every year, and then they dole out this and that and the other thing. But people in, oh, what's the country I had information on? I went to Bon Air. Thirty percent of their, their their finances pays for their health care. What's Bon Air? Bon Air, it's it's, it's a, off Aruba. Off Aruba. Oh, that's and a place. It's, 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 <laughs> that's, it's, that's it's an country. island. Yeah, it's an island. <laughs> I went there. Well, 
they, um, the people in the, a lot of those countries can't even afford to buy a car or a home. They live in big housing complexes. And owned by the government. Owned by the government, yeah. Yep. Well, you and know, I could, you're, you have no freedom. Your life isn't your own. You know what they're trying to do in, in Vermont on regional planning, in my opinion, what they're trying to do is everybody's living out in the country. Uh-huh. Now, now what's happening? They're trying to move them in. I have information for you, my friend. <laughs> um... Um, what is it? Um, Dick, ben Dick. Carson is the head of the uh, HUD, Housing and Urban yeah, Development. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's something called uh, AFFH, Affirmatively Furthering Fair Housing. And that's exactly what they want to do. They want to bring everybody off the, the wide open spaces, the land, and they want to bring them all into complexes like they do in China. Yeah. So to speak. So both of you, uh, the way I get, uh, I'm getting hints from you people. Like, <laughs> hints <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, Medicare for all? You don't support? Oh, not at all. That's scary. So you, you know, I'm happy with what I've got. Well, you know, if the cost of insurances wasn't way out of control, maybe you know it would be better than having Medicare for all. Now, but until we Medicare? until are we can control the Security? insurance companies and their gross profits and giving them to the uh, executive directors or CEOs. That's why we mean Medicare for all. Well, why wouldn't wouldn't you like to have an option of insurance companies and then be able, which we can't do now, to purchase insurance across state lines because some states are a lot cheaper than the insurance than others. But they don't want us to be able to purchase across state lines. So that's something that needs to happen. Yeah. Well, under Howard Dean, we got rid of most of the insurance companies. I know, and that was a big mistake. Yeah. But yep. until we can get the insurance companies under control and their costs and the doctor's costs and the hospital costs, there's no way that people in today's world can afford health insurance. I have a son, this is no lie. He cannot afford health insurance based on the money he takes in in order to buy the health insurance. So he has to pay everything out of his pocket. Mm-hmm. How old is your man, man is he? 30, uh, 35. He doesn't work for a company that offers health insurance? No. A lot of these small uh, small companies don't yeah. offer health insurance because you, the company owner has to pay in, the employee has to pay in. You know, until we can do something about that, I support Medicare for all. I know you Republicans don't like it. Well, there may be other options, well, but this is the socialist approach, okay? Government takeover of everything. Our homes, where we can live, our health insurance, our prescription drugs, the whole nine yards, and I fight back. I don't want anybody taking over control of my life. And well, I'm, you know, I, I, I know where you're, you know, you're coming from, but we, we got too many smart people in Montpelier, but they're too stupid to realize that they, <laughs> they gotta do something for the people and get this insurance under control, the cost of health ins- uh, insurance under control, and the cost of dental, cost of, uh, of prescriptions. It's yeah. outrageous. Uh, you know, I agree. In Montpelier, they're looking for money, not solutions. It, you know something, when I ran for, uh, against Lynn Dickinson, I got checks from the union. Yeah. You know something? You know what I did? I sent them back. Yeah. Good for you. You know, I've had checks from businesses send them to me. I sent them back. You know why? Because I don't want any, me as a person, as an individual, I want to be bought by anybody. You know, there's some, uh, our representatives. I did the same thing. But Jill, We got representatives here in Franklin County that take money from car dealers and uh, fuel dealers and all that stuff. Because why? Because they're buying their vote. Right. Yeah, well, nobody was going to buy my vote, let me <laughs> tell you that. Now, we have, you haven't had a whole lot to say That's here. That's okay. What, what is your... No, I'm just going to follow up on what he's saying. <clears throat> if you look at the agenda down in Montpelier, they're, they're good gun control, carbon tax, all this stuff here. And the Democrats really right now, they're talking in 2012... We're going to be all dead. I mean, 20, 2012. I mean, not 2012. Well, we're already dead. 12 years. 12, 20, yeah. 10, well, 10 years. One, now, there was a, a guy uh, today. It's 10 years. And uh, what's her name out of uh, um, down in New York? Oh, oh. Ocasio? Yeah. It's, uh, what's it? A, uh, AOC, AOC. AOC. She says, you know, in 12 years, we're going to all be gone. Well, no, if, uh, no, and eighty percent of the Democrats are are in favor, are pushing climate change. 
Well, you know, if there's any Republican or Democrat out there in Franklin County that's watching this on public access, <laughs> please call in. We'd love, love your input. Yeah, sure, anytime. <laughs> or independent. You know what I'm finding interesting? We're about halfway through the show, and I had done a lot of homework today, and I must have 12 different uh, topics, and here we are on number one. But that's okay because it's... It's, it's an, interesting, and it's affecting it the people who are here right now. You know, my house is going on the market in July. I've been thinking about that, too. <laughs> it's going on the market. I'm going on the road for at least a couple of years. He knows about it. I told yeah. him. He's going to head off to Tennessee where people are going. I'm thinking, too. <laughs> you know, I found that article by Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rogers that I read, read on the show that the reason he left Vermont is because it's too costly to stay here. The governor of the state of Vermont says that because of the fact that we got enough, not enough people here living in Vermont and paying, that they can't meet their budget. Well, guess what? And I all I the rich guys have left town. <laughs> I don't want to misspeak here, but to the best of my recollection, when I left the legislature, the end of two thousand and four, I believe that the state budget, the spending, was three billion something. Now it's six plus billion. For what? Right, nothing. <clears throat> I like the, we're the biggest school. employer in the state of Vermont. Yes, and if, as you look around, even just Franklin County, jobs are open everywhere. Yep. All kinds of jobs. But what's affecting people not coming in to work in these jobs is because of the high cost of health care, uh, child uh, care. And living. And we, we, yeah, that too. And the permitting process. I was talking to Tim Smith. We got possibility two to three factories coming into the industrial park. I, I read that. You know, some, he says it's busier now than it has been. But until you provide child care for, for these uh, people that want to work, why would I want to go out and pay $200 a week when I only make 450 a week to go to work? Well, let me ask you a question. I mean, that's a good question. Um, but how many people are living off the rest of us? And who's looking into what kind of... Is the Labor Department working with the Agency of Human Services to connect people right. in, like, say, St. Albans? How many people in St. Albans are on all kinds of programs who could work, but they're not being matched up with jobs? So why aren't they matching people up with jobs nope. in, in the area? You know, those two departments need to work together and say, hey, you have um, 3,000 people uh, in St. Albans or more. I don't know how many people live here who are on benefits, all kinds of benefits, who may be, some are, some aren't, capable of holding down a job. Why couldn't they be matched up with the appropriate job? But some of these people that take these jobs that are on social services, they make $4 more than they should. They, they, they kick them off. So what's the incentive of going getting off social services? The service? incentive is that you don't come back on. You have a job. If it's a livable wage, then they should be able to stay off. Oh. Yeah. I know you. That's I know bad, you do. You do, or your blood pressure that, will be up. No, no, that's not a good reason. Um, you, you could, it's buying them. That's buying them. Well, you know, we uh, need we're to. Not, we're not. We're not going to agree on that. No. One, so well, let's let it go. <laughs> well, All right. We've always said that technical school down at BFA should be more used more often. Right. I, I go by there. They, they got a welding <laughs> clinic. Oh, uh, all job. kinds of things. All, right, all these different things. A teacher's <clears throat> assistant. All that stuff. He. We should say, this is what you have to do. You have to go there and get educated, and we'll help you find a job. And that's, instead of giving people $10,000 to come here, we need to help the people who are here and, and get them incentives to reason why they want to go to work. And I don't think a lot of people out there, there's, there are a few I know of, but most people don't like to be on assistance. No. I think people are proud, but there are some people who like to ride on the wagon and not pull. And, but but you, you're always going to have that you, no matter where you are. You'll never get motivated to work if you know you're going to be taken care of, if that's yeah. your nature. Yeah. Okay? When I was 17 years old, I was on social services for one year. One year I was. Because I, I, got, you know, I, I was having a child, and I was married, and I didn't have any money. So I went to social services. <laughs> 
I don't know if you ever heard of the program. Uh, oh, there was a program uh, that, you know, they would find your work and you had to go to work. And uh, anyways, I started for the was city. Was it Jobs Corps? Job Corps? No, was it's it? not Job Corps. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. It would probably come to my, you know, seven, when I was 17 years old. I'm 67 now. So, <laughs> But, you know, I got off in it because my father told me one day, I told him I wanted to raise him my, my uh, allowance. I said, Dad, you only give me $2 a week. Can I get four? He gave me a rake and a shovel, and he says, go up and do Mrs. Uh, Nelson's lawn. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, something, that was the Earn best it. thing. Yeah. Earn it. That, those were my, but did I say? In order to get people off on social service, the state of New Hampshire says you've got to put in 100 hours a month in order to stay on social service. You should. I think they should Good. do that in the state of Vermont. Absolutely, yeah. we should. My mom. And I'm not a Republican. <laughs> well, you get a little credit for that. Yeah. At least we know you're smart. My mom told me, she died young, but before she died, she said to me one day, I'll never forget it. Linda, if you want something in this life, you expect to work for it, and earn it. Earn you it. don't expect anybody to give you anything. And that's how I've lived my life. When I was president of this public access TV station, uh, when, I, when I took over as uh, president, some of the employees didn't have hardly anything for benefits. Now they got good benefits, they get good wages. And that's why the employees stay here. Because we, if you treat your employees good, They'll stay. Hey, if they're important to the the employer, then they need to be compensated accordingly. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. I I agree with that. And we're starting to agree. Yeah, that's but it's <laughs> but it's well, I don't think I, I'm when you're talking. I'm thinking. But, <laughs> don't uh, think too hard. I don't want you to lose any more hair. No, the, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm looking around all these companies here. I I don't think there's a bad company in in Franklin County that doesn't treat their employees well. I well, think that, I think we have good employers. There's sweatshops in St. Albans Town. Really? Well, anyways, <laughs> I don't know where it is, but we can talk offline because yep. we don't want to get. There's sued. only one so that, that I know. Of. Yeah. So, but I'm serious. But most of them you see uh, for hiring people, and some of the people I know that they have parties, and they they you know it's almost like a family. And that's what most of these small companies do. It's a family association. Yeah. They work together, they yeah. play together, and yeah. so forth. What about that big uh, uh, tax break that uh, our President Trump gave to the, you know, the upper oh 1%? Oh, God, here we go. And then the ones down at the bottom. I haven't seen any of that. I, I haven't tax noticed break. anything. Any but the people at the 1% up the top got bigger tax breaks. Why was that? Because it's supposed to stimulate the company, con, the economy. The economy. The economy's but up. Some of those people the economy that got money, is stimulating. Right. Some of those employers took and helped some of those employees that made them strong. Yeah, but and some the, of them stuck it in their pocket who and knows? didn't do anything. Who knows? You always I, got that. I don't know. Yeah. Listen, um, unless you go ahead, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> it's your show. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you're my guest. That's okay. It's not all about me. No. Contrary to what you might think. <laughs> Uh, where, where, where was I going here? Darn you're it. Gonna, you're going to read oh, that. Oh, 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 here you go. H-439, House Bill 439, a bill to promote weatherization. Oh, gosh. This bill would double the fuel tax rate on oil, propane, kerosene, and de uh, it says dyed diesel. I'm not sure. Dyed, what diesel. dyed diesel is, is like a kerosene. Okay. That's farm, and, farm stuff. Yes. And I received uh, an email late this afternoon, which I didn't have time to read. I talked to Lynn Dickinson about that. Okay, one second, okay? <laughs> and and um, Guy Page wrote a lengthy uh, article here, and he added, and electricity will be taxed too. Electricity tax. Increased, yeah, uh, tax. So already being taxed. this weatherization, yeah. and it says weatherization would benefit Comparatively few Vermonters annually, while primarily adversely impacting the poor and those who live in the most rural areas of the state. Right. Because we're the ones who have to drive to get somewhere, okay? So, um, and we live, many of us, in private homes. I like to talk about the weatherization program because I talked to Lynn Dickinson. And then you're next. Okay, that's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> 
I talked to Lynn Dickinson. <clears throat> I says, I have no problem supporting this if it's a two cent or four cent increase in my fuel tax. Per, per gallon. Yeah. I said, the problem I have with it is that it should be there to help the senior citizens and people that you know are disabled. These slum landlords, and there's a lot of them around Franklin County, there's a lot of them in Richford, because I know I know a couple of them, that they'll let their apartment houses go to heck. They don't fix them up at all. They may get $1,200 a month from the four tenants there, there, you know, 1,200 times four, but they never fix the place up. You know why? Because they, they apply for that weatherization, they'll have all this work done, and we're paying for it, and that slum landlord getting away with it. And Mike, exactly. That's what, that's what I told Lynn Dickinson. And my question is exactly that. Why am I paying, or why might I pay, <laughs> to weatherize some landlord's house? I agree. That's not my responsibility. It's like government, at least the liberal thought thinking, yeah. is that everybody has to pay for everything instead of personal responsibility, and I can't stand it. Okay, when the slum landlords are, are, are getting their uh, apartment complexes fixed up, they ought to be tearing them down because they don't put any money into them, and they're not fit for human beings. Why? Why are, why are we paying for that? Well, because the way that program's set up. You know what it they is? Had to, they had to cut that part out. You know what it is? I think it's the environmentalists that want to force some sort of environmentally friendly type of fuel or whatever. Anyway, let's go. Go <laughs> ahead. You well, have a turn. <laughs> well, I, as most of you know, I'm a, I belong to the NRA, and I got something in the mail today. You know, they want to get people out there. They get a, a thing, an S-169. Um, um, there we go again, trying to more control with the hunters and the people who own weapons in Vermont. <laughs> So I think everybody out there should realize that you should call your legislators and talk to them about this because they're infringing on us a little at a time. You know, last year they talked about it. Every time there's a shooting somewhere, and no matter where it is, and we had some overseas uh, shootings, and I think that I, that's, that's awful stuff. But we don't have a lot of that here in the United States, except down in Pennsylvania recently. You have a lot of shootings in the United States, no, but I'm not talking, in Vermont, not very little in Vermont. Right, no. I'm talking other than drug criminals and stuff right. like that. So we really need to get the people down in Montpelier to take heed and stop trying to take away <laughs> guns away from law-abiding citizens. So you think people that are mental, uh, mental health people should be carrying guns? No, I think there should be a background check and see if you're competent to have it. Now, I'm not going to be the judge. I'm, somebody else can do that. But we, it's in an amendment, the right to get bare arms. Do you think that they should have a... What do you call it? That uh, a blocker, a bunker? Not blocker, or the. Oh, uh, I know what you mean. Yeah. You no. put sixteen shells in them. No, I have, I have, I have the, the, the rifle I have can only hold six. That's right. I, and and most of the guns I own are barely eight. So yep. no, we don't you, need you, we don't need machine guns out there. So no sportsman that I know has that kind of weapon you here know, in Vermont. You know what the difficulty is. The do-gooders, so to speak. Um, yeah, that's that's maybe a poor use of words, but uh, those no, that's a good, a good <laughs> those do-gooders. who want to inch by inch, step by step, disarm us and take away our Second Amendment constitutional right. right. I don't think that'll happen in the state of Vermont. Well, it shouldn't happen anywhere. That's right, anywhere. Oh, yeah. well, I'm, and. I'm, I'm, um, we have, the problem is that um, because there are people who do the wrong thing, then they want to punish everybody. I agree. I and, and that is yeah. not right. I, I agree. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing you with know, you. You know, if, if there's an arsonist, do you take, you know, matches away from everybody? You know, I mean, really. Let me ask you this. This what? is, this is a ahead. sensitive question. Do you feel that parishioners ought to be able to carry guns to yes. church? Yeah. I agree. Yep. Because we got too many people that are anti anti Christianity, anti religion. He knows how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I suggested it to one of our parishioners that he carry a gun. And I know they do. I heard they do. 
And okay. what about teachers? Um, yep. Trained teachers. That's, uh, that, that guy down in Florida is pushing for that, and I'm 100% in favor of that. If they're trained, you know, trained. and trained properly. Yes. And, you know, well, we're going to spend $2.5 million putting in an addition between the old hospital and BFA to you know, make it more secure so the, the kids don't walk in the op- outdoors into the next building. What What's going in there? It's going to be a... Can it just be on the outside, just be protective? Or do they have to have now all kinds of others? Why $2.5 million? Because anything you build in Vermont doesn't cost $250 anymore. <laughs> because, no. you know, that, that, that's a long space between the old hospital and BFA. It's not you know, that they, they got to make it more secure so that the, you know we don't have to worry about our kids being shot. You well, know, we have uh, we have uh, officers in BFA. We have officers in oh, yeah. town central uh, town. Uh, town school. Yeah. You know, uh, it's uh, back when I was going to school. We never had that. <laughs> what, what would happen if there there was uh, there's it like at when I used to do the show at the um, at the school. Yeah. Before we had this lovely building, um, they had a camera, so they knew who was at the door. And you were supposed to check in at the desk. Uh, how many people did, I don't know. But if they have locks on the doors, if they have a camera system, and then if they have uh, someone, let's say, who's in the nearest, like the office, uh, having someone who's skilled with an, a weapon... Uh, in case something should happen. But all of those doors need to be secured, and you don't get in without, you know, the proper measures, yeah. safety measures in place. That's the way it should be. But, you know, uh, they feel by putting that billing to connect the old hospital into the BFA is more secure for students. What have we declined he to? He voted for it. He's, a, you know, uh, on, on the uh, BFA budget. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Which is the unification, yeah. uh, Maple Run unification. Oh, see, do, I'm do, not. Do you, do you think that's cut, uh, had our taxes go down? I got to start smoking marijuana if you think my taxes went down. You mean uh, the unification? Yeah, Maple Run unification. Our see, taxes yeah. were supposed to go down or kept under control. Mm-hmm. I'm not in favor you, of wait that. Wait till you get your tax bill. You'll I, find out. I'm old fashioned, I guess. I like having your own community school that can be run by the community. Do you think that Georgia's kids should all go to BFA or should they no. go everywhere they, they want? They have school choice, and I think okay. that's, that is why so many people want to settle. All the new homes in Georgia are unbelievable right? Yeah. because people want that option. Only the rich live on the Klein Road. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, but, you know, I agree because I went down there and videotaped that meeting, and, you know, I was— there was about 350 chairs in front of me, and I was behind the chair. And when the people started coming in, they had to bring more chairs. I think they had about 700 people. And we went down, uh, public access went down, and uh, being me, that uh, I For video- which? For Georgia? For, because there was a push to send them all to BFA St. Albans. Oh, okay. And the uproar that there were people, you know, we want the right to send them where we want to. All kinds of rights are being taken right. away from the individual. Yeah. And guess what? The founders of this nation knew that if we the people did not be, become involved and vigilant about what was going on, then we were going to lose our rights, and it's happening. People, I say, wake up, speak out, go to the meetings, write letters to the editor, talk to your school board or whatever you need to do, but get involved in your community and speak out. I know how much you two like Donald Trump. I, you do? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's, you what you know, one of the things that I, I, that I agreed with him, and he should have closed uh, the Mexican border, is, and tell that government down there, get your act together, clean it up, or we're not su- shipping any more your vegetables and your, your garbage into the United States. That, look, we yeah. are a sovereign nation. We have every right to have a secured border. <laughs> to protect the people of this country. And we have an option for people to enter this country, but they must do like my grandparents did, go through the legal system. Well, you know something? I I asked a custom agent, because I I go to the gym. may not look like it, but I do. (laughs) And uh, I I said to him, I said, when are we going to put a uh, wall up there on the Canadian border? (laughs) Absolutely, because you know what? 
A well, lot of people are sneaking in through that border. But yeah. Berlin Wall went down. They took that down a long time ago. Yeah, Ronald Reagan. Mr. <laughs> Gorbachev, tear down that wall. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that but that was between two sections of one country. North, yeah. um, East and West Germany, okay? Yeah. That's different. That, that would be like us having a border right up through the center of our country. I'd like to have a border against California. But <laughs> China has a border. Yeah, on, on its outskirts. On, so. on, the, on the wall going right straight Oh, yeah, there. and all these wealthy Democrats in Congress have their own... Uh, gated uh, gated, community. gated community. Or, you know, big walls around their homes. Because there's so much But they money. don't want us to have that protection. Right. Yeah. You so, know, because they can afford it. They, you know, that one percent can afford it. We need, even including Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we we need um, we need our priorities rearranged in this country, and the first thing is national security for the people of this country, the citizens of this country. I think family values ought to come back first, and then get this country straightened out. Old-fashioned values. Yeah, and you know something, I hate to say it, but you know, back when I can't remember what year it was when they decided that. You know, Sunday was a you know a day of rest. You know, and go to church. Now that you know, you, you can go. You, know, you can go to the buyers. You can go to the stores. You can go everywhere. Well, Vermont used to have a blue law. Blue law. That's what that's I was saying. That's right. You yeah, know, blue law. Our kids um, are, are too many games. You know, they're uh, you know they're on the road a lot. Business. Yeah. You know, and the churches, St. Mary's. There's not a lot of people go to that church. Holy Angels is seeing a decrease. Uh, the Episcopal Church on the corner of Church Street and Fairfield Street, they're having financial problem. Congregational Church over there, they have, you know, they get a new minister over there, a lot of people are coming back. But I'll tell you what, I've seen some of the church services. There wasn't hardly anybody in the, uh, in the audience in that church. You know, our church in the, in the summertime is about 40 people. In the wintertime, it's about between 12 and 18. You know, um, all the smart ones leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean leave the state? No, they go to they go uh, south. Go, 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 oh. There's no birds. <laughs> well, th there are big problems with lack of attendance uh, and participation at churches. I know uh, my church is involved in the community in a lot of ways. They have a lot of activities. We have a number of young children in the church. It, it's not perfect. Um, and frankly, overall, I think, and I could be wrong, I've been known to be wrong before, that the pastors, the priests, whatever, are very measured in what they say. They, they, if I were a pastor, I'd be telling the people what they need to hear. And it would be about... Um, families and and raising children and citizenship and all kinds of important things um, and not being afraid that if you say this you're gonna you're gonna offend this group and if you say that you're gonna offend that group and next thing you know you have no money in the church yeah. okay and no attendance but I think I personally am hungry to hear the message that Stop ties that. in the Bible right. and biblical times with today and, and today's lives and the principles and so forth. That's when you move to Tennessee, you'll hear it because down there, the, the minister walks around in front. He's got a Bible in his hand and it says, chapter this, verse this, this, this. They read right their, their sermon is read from the Bible. Well, we get we get up. that. Yeah, we get that. And and sometimes the the biblical passages are tied in right. to today's living. Um, well, I, you know, how many people are becoming priests? How many people are becoming? They're the not. Minister? They're not. Father Roy is all done this year. They oh, can't. They can't. Yeah, he's find. Reti finally retiring. You know, he's been doing it. I don't know how many many yeah, he's years. A, he's a great guy. They can't find. People who want to do these things. If I ever gave a sermon in the church, there'd only be two there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if I gave one, probably the same thing. But we've got to stir people up, wake them up, and and make them realize what's at stake. Uh, you you two are staunch Republicans. I got a question because the show's pretty it. well almost Go for over. It. <laughs> Who's coming to the state of Vermont? from Wisconsin is going to be speaking on May 30th. Oh, at the, the former governor, 
Um, yeah. Uh, oh, dear. Now I'm embarrassed. Yeah, he was. He, he, he's raising money for the Republican Party. Right. <laughs> well, listen, the, Dem the Democrats have all the big money and the donors. The Republican Party doesn't. But there's problems within the Republican Party right now because some people don't like Scott. And, uh, but uh, there is a big guy coming to uh, the Hilton on May 30th at 5 o'clock. Do you want to come along? You know what the, the price Yes, I know what the price is. What is it? It's $125 unless, per person unless you get a table of eight and then it's $100 each. $1,000. No. No. You know who it is? You don't know who it is. Yet. Yes, I well, do. I got the email. I know who it is, but I can't. It's, it's right. It's right on, he, he broke the unions in Wisconsin. That's right. And then he got reelected. Yeah. What the heck was Scott this? Scott Walker. Scott Walker. Okay, thank yeah. you. I'm you're gonna the, be down there. The I'm gonna be down there picketing. <laughs> if you, if you listen, if you want to um, make a donation at a certain level, then you can pay a thousand dollars. But no, the dinner is one hundred and twenty-five per person. Yep. Or if if you and I want to get a table of eight, if you want to go, um, then it's a hundred dollars a ticket. I'm going to be doing a show in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be doing a show on un why unions are necessary and stay for months. <laughs> so you might want to watch it. <laughs> I'm going to have to come in and, and watch it because I don't get cable. Um, but you can go on the Internet. You know that. You can go after on the, the North fact. Northwest Public Access. After the fact. Backslash YouTube. Uh, yeah. 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 You yeah. I, or, I, but when, they're, when, they're, when it's live. They, I don't do Facebook. You don't? No. No. Okay. No, I gave that up. It's a waste of time for me. <laughs> okay. But, so we got, we're got. we going to have about 500 people down there picketing in front of the hill. Oh, <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> don't waste your time. <laughs> um, you're going to pay for the, uh, you're going to pay for the security? Well, we're going to have, you know, posters and everything. Oh. You're kidding me. Have I ever lied to you? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I've ever lied to you. <laughs> no. But I think you're I was jesting. at a meeting last night, and we're organizing a meeting. Come on. Hey, I ain't lying to you. Can't we? Can't Look, it's a Democrat state. Can't we even have one speaker come? Well, you know, without people, pe people, uh, people uh, protest when Trump comes here. They protest when uh, Biden's here. They're going to protest when Bernie's here. That's, That's what society is all about now. <laughs> That's ridiculous. What do you okay, mean? Child protested with Bernie. Who pr protests for Bernie? Some of the people Against that don't like him, Bernie. Against him, you mean. Okay, how no. about the child care system? You brought that up. Yep. I want to men mention this first. Um, the state mandates for licensing, licensing for child care providers, um, wait, for licensing and imposed education of home daycare providers they have drove a, many existing providers right, out, out of the of child care right, arena. That's what I'm talking about. Increased cost of providing daycare services for children resulted in a devastating loss of home care providers unable to meet those expectations. You have to have a associate's degree. Instead of reversing the mandates, I agree, they should be reversed. The legislative majority is considering providing increased funding subsidies from revenues yet to be defined. Oh, my God. And Tax increase, that's yep, what it is. And one more tax increase. <laughs> and between December 2015 and June 2018, Franklin County lost 32.5% of registered or licensed home daycares going from 126 to 85. I believe that was deliberate. Probably was. You know what? Because they want the kids in the school system. Well, you Even know, when, the, the preschool kids. When yeah. the kids are going to, you know, when my kids were growing up, I, when I sent them to kindergarten, I paid for that in my pocket. Now, of course. Now, now, it's parents' now responsibility. It's, now it's in the school system. Right. Now it's, now it's the public's responsibility. Yep. Hey, you get the grandparents. You get a neighbor to help take care of your kids. You work three days a week and, and maybe on the weekend when your spouse is home. You know, you work it out for your family. Right now, grandparents are taking care of their children more a, and more than a lot you, of uh, them. what you see right now and yep. you hear about. Yep. Because, you know, the parents have to work because... Just to, have a, just to have a basic house, maybe two cars, because one works in Burlington, the other one might work in Rouse's Point, because I know uh, a family that did that. 
So. Uh, four minutes left. Four minutes. Well, well that, that's you gotta, you gotta talk give, fast. Thanks, huh? thanks to Montpelier, all that stuff is like you said. It's, they're taxing people. We read that letter from those people who moved to Tennessee, remember? Yeah, the under, Rogers. Under, all right? And it's happening every day. And why can't those people down in Montpelier get a hold of it? I mean, the population, you know, I, was, I got a, a, a reply back from uh, Pat Leahy about the Electoral College. I sent it to you. And he says, well, the reason why, I said, the reason why our founding fathers did that is because we don't have any population here. We don't have a million people. We got 625,000. That's the last, it's probably gone down. And he said in the last two elections, it was a majority one, not the, 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 the well, I can't even speak Electoral. today. Electoral. Electoral College. And I said to myself, uh, that was Trump and Obama won. Who was the other, what was the other one that, there was a uh, presidential know. election I didn't see? He said in the last two elections, majority w would have won. The college passed it over. So I, was, I can't figure who, well, you know, I, I, was, I think it was George W. Bush and and Trump, if you, the last two. I know, I know I want to say something because I know it'll get, Me you, too. get you Republicans really Quickly. riled up. Is Bernie would have been a better president than uh, oh. Trump or Hillary. <laughs> okay, in your dreams. <laughs> um, the Electoral College gives a representation, like the state of Vermont has three electoral votes. Right. Right. I was one of them one year. I was uh, honored to have that uh, opportunity. But um, you... If if you go with just the popular vote, people from Vermont wouldn't have any say at all in electing the president. South Dakota, North Dakota, Wyoming, all, the small all states. those states out there wouldn't have a word. California, Pennsylvania, New York, all those big states. The liberal run, states. Right, that would run the country. <laughs> and all those little guys, all right. If New Hampshire has more delegates than we have. Well, you know, they what we got to do is get population. Yeah. what we need to do is get rid of Regional Planning Act 250 and get it under control. That's and true. that's the only way, only way we're going to get companies not a, to come come back to those. I'm not money. a fan of regional planning. I they think it should the be communities. In any, any community or town. Yep, and that's all part of the plan. Yep. Yeah. So, um so did I get your blood pressure up, both of you no, people? No, no, no. I'm used. I know what to expect. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, we covered our state budget. And you know what? There's no way all of these things that the legislature, the Democrats, again, because they're in control three quarters of, you know, of the members. Right. Um, I'm up here uh, Thursday night. Uh, you will. Campaigning down there and trying to get some of those Republicans and Democrats come over to the union side. Uh, okay. Um, I one last thing. Oh gosh, only a minute. Um, English as the official language of the U.S. and Vermont. Over 50 nations have English as their official language, and 32 American states, U.S. states, have made English their official language. We need to do that here. I agree. Oh my God. <laughs> because we don't want a multilingual lingual society in this right. country. And people who become citizens must learn English. As of, I think, 1962, 52 or 62, it's in the law that it, when you become a citizen, you have, to learn, you have to learn English. And I think we ought to do away with telemarketers, too. Telemarketers. Yeah. <laughs> I get at least five phone calls a day, and I like playing with them. Oh, yeah. and you know what? Their local phone numbers are. That's right. And they're, if they're double numbers, something, you know, it's not a, a person locally. The, yeah. Uh, the attorney general, I think, is going to work on that. I He's hope gotten so. a lot of feedback on it. Uh, if, if I'm right, we're down to 19 seconds. <laughs> so I want to thank you both. We'll have to do this again because there are so many more topics to cover. Yeah, right. Are you willing to come back? Just make, make sure you do it before I leave town. <laughs> oh, <laughs> before we all leave. Yeah. Okay, well, folks, thank you so much yeah. for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the program, and uh, we'll be back. So have a great week, and I'll see you again next week. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>